iPad Pro only for the last month. Let me share with you the experience. So a month ago, I purchased the brand new iPad Pro 2020 12.9 inch to replace completely my laptop. If you want to know exactly why, I'm going to leave a link up here with the explanation. Overall, I don't regret purchasing and using the iPad Pro as my main a computer device. It's been a real joy to use, but it has its downsides, which we're going to talk about later on in the video. First, let me share with you what I really liked about using the iPad Pro as my main computer device for the last month. The first thing is touch. I love interacting with my iPad with my fingers and using it as a touch device primarily and then as a computer. So I love the fact that I can bring the iPad really close to me, interact with my fingers and really make the experience very personal. So I really love this kind of a workflow. The second thing that I like about the iPad Pro is the Apple Pencil. The Apple Pencil is basically the same thing as my fingers, provides me the same experience as my fingers, but it's just much more precise when I'm doing something like video editing, photo editing, and obviously note taking. So I really love the Apple Pencil experience. It's very smooth, very easy to charge on the iPad Pro. It touches magnetically and it just works really great. And next thing is Face ID, which I got used on my iPhone. Now I have it on my main computer device to log into websites, I reveal my passwords, unlock the device. Face ID is super duper convenient to use and I'm really loving Face ID on my iPhone and also on the iPad. I actually wish that Apple would release a MacBook uh, or a MacBook Pro with Face ID. That would be really great. Next one is portability. This device is super portable. Although this is the 12.9 inch and some on the internet say that the 12.9 inch is not portable, for me, it's more than portable than any laptop I've used in my life. Yes, if you're going to hold it, like I said in one of my previous videos, in one hand and you're going to do something else with a pencil, for example, it's not going to be as portable as the 11 inch iPad Pro or in any other uh, iPad version on the market. Next one is simplicity and performance. The iPad Pro is really very simple to use, very easy to use. I got used to the workflow in like three, four days. Very, very simple and it's very, very powerful. I can edit 4K videos, I can edit photos, I can edit uh, music and make music. I can do multitasking without any issues whatsoever. This uh, tablet performs very, very well and actually uh, from benchmarks, this iPad Pro is as powerful as some MacBook Pros and some other high-end laptops on the market, which is very, very great. And the last thing, the iPad Pro is really fun to use uh, for creative tasks such as video editing, photo editing, drawing, music creating and stuff. Because like I said previously, it's much more personal because I can bring it really close to me, interact with my fingers and it feels more fun to create music, videos, photos. And I personally really love this kind of a workflow because I feel more attached to what I am creating and it makes the experience just way, way more fun than doing the same thing on a laptop or on a desktop computer. Now I want to share with you what I didn't really like about using the iPad Pro as a main computer for the last month, because let's be honest here, this is not a laptop, this is a tablet, and it's not perfect. It's not going to be a lot of replacement for everybody. So the first thing that I don't really like about the iPad Pro as a laptop replacement is that some apps are still undeveloped, especially if you're doing something professionally like video editing, photo editing, music making, and some other things. So if you're doing something really professionally, this can be a bottleneck for some workflows. For me, it's fine because I'm editing YouTube videos and casual photos, but if you're doing something professionally, you need professional apps, the apps on the iPad are great, but they're still not comparable to desktop apps like Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, uh, Lightroom on a desktop, Photoshop on a desktop. It's getting there, but it's still not there. So if you're doing something professionally, I would say stick with the desktop and you can buy the iPad Pro as a complementary device to complement your professional workflow. Or if you're a YouTuber like myself and you're video editing, and your editing and your creative tasks are very simple and minimalistic like uh, I have, then the iPad Pro can be a good laptop replacement. Second thing is the Safari desktop browsing experience is not there yet. 
uh, to be a real desktop browsing experience because it has still some problems, still some lags. I noticed a lot of problems and issues uh, on my YouTube uh, channel because when I'm trying to upload videos, I have some issues. When I'm trying to change my description on my YouTube videos, I have some issues. When I'm trying to add ed end screens, uh, cards and stuff like that, when I'm trying to play around with the settings on YouTube, I usually have some bugs and issues and also on some other websites, it's still not completely polished out like on desktop browsing. So it's almost there, the browsing, the desktop browsing experience, but it's still not there yet. And the last thing is the Files app file manager on the iPad Pro, which is completely not comparable to a desktop file manager experience because there are still some bugs and issues. You cannot format a drive. Some files are unsupported by the Files app, like uh, ProRes, for example. And there are many weird issues in the Files app. So if you want to do something again professionally with your files, I would highly suggest using a desktop or a MacBook Pro or something like that. But for me, it's more than enough for my kind of a workflow. It has been really great. So yeah, this was my experience of using the iPad Pro as my main computing device. The iPad Pro is not going to replace everybody's laptop, but it's a really great tool to have, especially for creative people like myself. I'm still going to continue using the iPad Pro as my main computing device because my demands from my computer are very, very minimal and simple, and the iPad Pro fills all the gaps. And hopefully next month, when Apple is going to release the iOS 14, the iPad OS 14, they're going to address uh, most of the issues that I was talking about previously in the video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.